What is going on everybody, Estas here, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, like you guys read in the title, we're going to be talking about Tesla stock and NEO stock. And these two stocks today, guys, oh my goodness, they went absolutely off the wagon. And we're also going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ, and briefly talking about what I personally did today on the 3rd of July in terms of my trades. So before before we do get into the topics, guys, if you enjoy the video, feel free to go down below and hit that like button. Join our two communities if you haven't done so already. One of them is the Discord chat. The other one's the Facebook group, 100% free of charge. And I guarantee you guys will find a ton of value in there. So let me just minimize myself very quickly and let's just get right into it. Starting off with the overall market update here, taking a look at the S&P 500. And by the way, guys, the markets did close today at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's why you guys can see it's not filled uh, pretty much right here, right? And the markets are not moving right now. And I am recording this video at about 2.45 p.m. But nonetheless, the S&P on the short day of trading today ended up closing up 22 points, up 0.77%. And we hit another all-time high today at 29.95.84. As you guys can see, the Dow Jones Industrial Average today, guys, up 179 points, up 0.67%. And let's see, I don't think, oh, it was an all-time high. All-time high in the Dow Jones today, guys. Absolutely unbelievable. This is actually the first all-time high since back in the October month when we did see that uh, peak at about 26, I believe like 950 or something like that. And we just briefly surpassed that today, which is very, very good. The NASDAQ here, guys, also hit an all-time high today at 78.92.75. We were up 50 points at the close, up 0.64%. So the markets are continuing this rally. They are continuing this roar that they've been on over the past couple of days. And honestly, guys, at this point, you know, I don't know, and, and since we don't have much data of, uh, you know, the S&P, the NASDAQ, and the Dow past these levels of resistance, obviously since they're at all-time highs, you know, now we're going to see and, and really take a look at, at least that's what I'm doing, I want to see if these markets are going to hold, you know, these all-time highs, all-time high levels and hold those old resistance levels as new supports. And let me explain what I mean by that. You guys can clearly see here, on the one year, one day chart for the S&P, you know, there's a clear older resistance at 2950. We got topped off there back in the September month. We got hit there again on the May month, in the May month. And we did briefly uh, towards the end of June before catapulting up to where we are now. So the fact that we broke out of that resistance and now we're at all time highs again, I want to see, you know, are we going to maintain 2950 and maybe maintain $3,000 in the S&P if we do actually get there. And you guys can see the ES right now, which is the uh, the E-mini S&P futures, they're actually already at $3,000. So I'm interested in seeing, you know, are we going to hold these levels? The Dow Jones Industrial Average, you guys can see there's a, also a resistance spot there that we got hit at three different occasions. Back in September at about $26,800, back in uh, towards the end of April, heading into May at about 26700 uh, back in uh, towards the end of June. A couple of weeks ago, we got hit at that same spot. And since we catapulted to that all-time high today, you know, that's going to be a level that was an old resistance that I'm going to see and looking to see if it's going to maintain that as a new support, right? Same thing with the NASDAQ. Resistance here, resistance. Now, you know, are we going to hold 7900 7890 as a new support? These are things that I'm personally looking for. And, uh, you know, judging on some other technicals for the S&P, you guys can see, you know, we actually did briefly hold that support yesterday before popping up to an all-time high today, which is pretty attractive. 20 day, one hour, you know, all you're really seeing here is the S&P continuing the uptrend. We push to a higher high. So maybe on Friday, maybe this next week, you know, if we pull back, maybe we, maybe we'll retest 2970, maybe we'll retest 
29.50 and maybe that 50 SMA support. That could definitely happen since we did push up to that higher high. You know, a pullback here wouldn't completely shock me. And you guys can see, you know, on the uh, on the five day, five minute, maybe we pull back down to again that 29.70 to 29.80 level. Maybe retest that 180 SMA here. So those are just a couple of things I'm thinking about right now. But the the you know the brief consensus is. We're still in the uptrend, guys. We're obviously hitting all-time highs, and uh, we may be pulling back, maybe retesting some of these support levels, like I mentioned on the S&P for the Dow. Maybe 26,850. This is an old resistance, now a new support. Maybe we can retest that. Maybe hold the 50 SMA, or maybe we sell off down to the 180 SMA if we do see a bit of a cool-off period. Notice how the RSI is very overbought at this point. So these are just some things that could happen. Happen, right going back to the 20 day one hour maybe we pull back here hold that support or maybe we pull down to the 50 SMA or maybe we just continue to fly up who knows 26 uh, you know 27,000 is the next uh, round whole number for the Dow we may be heading there guys you know NASDAQ right now if we hold 7900 we may be shooting up to an $8,000 NASDAQ. Or if we pull back, the 50 SMA is going to be what I'm watching as a support, as well as the 180 SMA here on the 20-day, 1-hour chart. Going over to the 184-hour chart, you guys can see we haven't really fully broken out of that level quite yet. And if we do, we want to see it hold that level as a new support. If we fail, you know, we may be pulling back from there. So at this point, guys, the markets are at a spot where where I'm finding it tricky on, you know, where we're going to go because we could pop up, continue to hit all-time highs, hold those old resistances as new supports, or, you know, we can pull back, potentially cool off a bit here since we did hit all-time highs on all of the indexes and the RSI levels on all of the indexes are a bit overbought. You know, we may be cooling off a bit. So I'm excited to see how things pan out here over the next couple of days. The market tomorrow, the 4th of July, it's obviously obviously closed, so I hope you all um, enjoy that holiday if you do um, celebrate that holiday, and that's pretty much it for the market update, guys. Nothing too crazy, but all-time highs um, again, so that's just it, honestly. So, let's talk about Tesla stock here very quickly. I'm sure you guys already know this. this is probably old news because it did come out yesterday, but we saw Tesla stock has just completely been killing it. Ever since we hit that low, at about $170, $180, somewhere in that ballpark, Tesla has been able to come back up to $240 to $245 per share, which is absolutely ridiculous. And I've been talking about Tesla a lot, and I've been saying how until the narrative surrounding the company changes, until we see a production uh, a, a hit, you know, that we just got yesterday, until we get a profit, you know, that's not going to change. You know, the sentiment isn't going to be changed until we get those things and what did we get yesterday guys finally we got a very positive thing a uh, piece of news that's slowly changing that sentiment right and that is the 95,200 vehicles that were able to be delivered producing 87,048 vehicles. Tesla set a new production and delivery record during the second quarter. The stock jumped 7% in aftermarket hours, which is absolutely ridiculous. The company delivered 95,200 cars during the three months ending June 30th, a 51.1% increase um, you know, over an admittedly weak first quarter and besting its previous quarter of 90,700 deliveries. And if we go down here, guys, a disappointing 63,000 vehicles were delivered during the first three months of the year when Tesla was plagued by challenges transporting cars from its factory in Fremont, California, across the world, as well as questions about waning customer demand. So this is a piece of news. Now, if we couple that with a profit, maybe a couple of consecutive quarters of profit, this can launch up Tesla stock, maybe even back up to 300 350 it can maybe explode from here but this is a good first step in my opinion for the uh the bull case here on tesla and if we go back and just very quickly take a look at what's going on right here on tesla stock 
you know, we've completely broken out of that downwards channel that I've been talking about, right? The 180 SMA, the 50 SMA, they were once acting as strong resistance levels. And notice how we're out of those levels of resistance now, and we're actually holding them as new supports. And now we pulled back from 245 down to about 230, and it seems like Tesla wants to hold this old resistance as a new support at 230. So that's very, very good right now. This is something that I'm going to be watching, uh, you know, for this upcoming week. Maybe Tesla pops from here on this good news. Maybe it hits 250 from 234, 235. And at that point, you know, that could offer a pretty nice trade of about five, six, seven percent, right? And NEO, which is uh which has been deemed by the media, the the community out there, investors, just people in general, as the Chinese Tesla. This company, um, from my personal understanding, they didn't really report anything crazy yesterday. They've simply flown up due to Tesla. So it seems like the damper on electric vehicles um, affected NEO, obviously, because they're uh, an electric vehicle maker. And Tesla's scrutiny obviously affected NEO as well. So it seems like since Tesla stock popped, you know, NEO stock went, you know, pretty, pretty uh, high. It went like 20, 25%, I believe, from 260, uh, if I'm not mistaken, in these past two days. And I might be wrong on that actually now that I'm thinking about it from 260 up to the high, yeah, it was about 20%. So NEO stock is moving in the same direction as Tesla. And I personally think now, you know, if Tesla, uh, if the stock continues to do well and the sentiment around the Tesla stock, Tesla company, the community... You know, if that remains positive, this can flow into NEO and really affect NEO stock. And at this point, guys, NEO, it's a bit overbought. You can't really deny that based off the RSI. But if we break out of this 180 SMA here, guys, the resistance, you know, this one could be a runner, especially if we break out pull back a bit, cool that RSI down a bit. If we hold the 180 as a new support, you know, we could be in, um, that could be a pretty good spot to get in for a trade. But remember guys, don't buy anything based on my opinion. This is just my opinion. NEO is extremely speculative. This company can go bankrupt like this. And actually, just speaking on NEO, for those of you guys that don't remember, a lot of you guys are new to the channel. You probably have no idea, but I actually bought NEO stock a couple of months months ago. I forget exactly what month it was. I think it was in between March and April. I was actually buying in at about exactly $5.30. I don't know if it was here exactly, but I was down 50% on my position when it was here at 230. And to be honest with you guys, I completely forgot about Neo stock until uh, an Instagram follower of mine ended up sparking up a conversation with me yesterday through the DM. And I was like, oh, okay, let me take a look at Neo. And then the next day, literally, poof, 12%, right? That's pretty crazy. So, you know, Neo, I'm down, still down like 30, 40% again, uh, but it's simply a $500 investment that I'm completely willing to lose. And I don't know why my disc is almost full here. So hopefully I still have enough storage to film this video. So that's kind of it in terms of um, Tesla and Neo, guys. In terms of my trading today, I'm simply just still holding INTC, which is a stock that I swing traded uh, from yesterday. I ended up getting in yesterday at about $47.80. Eighty cents as we did bottom out, you know, on this 180 SMA here. We ended up gapping up today. You guys can see there is a bit of a resistance here at 48.50 where I was planning on adding more money today. But until we break out of this level of resistance from a couple of days ago, I'm not really planning on adding money into INTC. I'm strictly holding it because we are still maintaining that 50 SMA support, which is really attractive. So this is a hold for me right now, heading into Friday. And if we pop up on Friday, let's say we gap up. $49, $49.20, closer to $49.50, that level of resistance, you know, that's going to be a point in time where I'm going to be locking in my profits. But in terms of my day trades today, guys, I didn't really do much. I simply just, you know, held on to INTC. I'm up on that position. I don't know exactly how much, probably like 1% at this point. If we go and see roughly where I got in up until now, yup, it's about 1, 1 1.3, 1.4% right now up on INTC. So that that is the trading update for today's um, video, guys. Uh, taking a look at some other stocks, let me just pull my little uh, thing over here. 
honestly, guys, you know, heading into this upcoming week at this point, heading into Friday, I'm obviously keeping an eye on INTC. I'm in that position. I want to add more to that. 3M ended up doing quite well today, bounced on that 50 SMA. We're approaching that 175 level. So if this breaks above 175, we could have a runner up to maybe 178 maybe, you know, $180 per share. And you guys can see on the 184-hour chart, that is not too out of reach because 178 if we were to test that and break out, you know, the next spot would be around 183 So from 175 to 178 that could be a potential swing trade. And from 178 up to 183 that is also very possible. Uh, what other ones was I watching yesterday uh, and watching today? AMD, that one really didn't do anything today. Obviously, test Tesla and NEO. These are two stocks that I'm going to continue to watch as they are in the hype of the electric vehicles right now. You know, there's a quite possible uh, uh, positivity surrounding um, this uh, niche here. The companies in that particular market. Very, very good right now. Um, let's take a look down here. You know, of course, the inverse ETFs, natural gas, once it potentially breaks into 230, this could be a bullish move on natural gas and above 240. That could be an extremely bullish move. And in that case, UGAZ, UGAZ is going to be the ETF that I'm going to be playing. And in terms of market ETFs, guys, I'm sure a lot of you already know these, but heading on to Friday and the rest of this month, you know, let's say the market continues to rally, right? There's going to be one in particular that I'm going to like to play, and this is TQQQ, guys. And I'm sure a bunch of you, again, already know this, but for the new viewers out there, TQQQ is an ETF. It's a leveraged ETF that goes up whenever the NASDAQ 100 is going up. So let's say, for example, the NASDAQ one day goes up 2%. Let's say the green in the market continues, the markets continue to do well. You know, this will go up 6%. It goes three times higher than what the NASDAQ goes up. And let's say you want to track an ETF, you want to play an inverse uh, leveraged ETF that trades based upon the S&P 500. Well, luckily for you, there's one that tracks the S&P 500, right? And that is SPXL, which actually just hit an all-time high um, today or yesterday at about 54.35. And this works just the same as TQQQ. This one goes up the same or rather three times what the S&P goes up. So let's say the S&P 500 goes up 2% one day. SPXL is going to be up 6%. And let me show you guys, right? And, and by the way, it's not exactly 3x. It's roughly 3x, right? It's not going to be exact in terms of how much higher the SPXL ETF is going to go. But for example here, guys, take a look. 2.24% is the move that this ETF made today. Let's go to the SPX and see what it did today. 0.72, do, or 0.77. Do some math in your head. 0.7 plus 0.7, what is that? That's 1.4. 1.4 plus 0.7, that is going to be 2.3. And if you guys see 2.3, or is that is that right? 2.3? No, it's not 2.3. It's 2.1. 2.1. And we go back to the XPS or XPSL. You guys can see it's pretty much up 2.1, 2.2. You guys kind of get the idea, right? So that's kind of it for today's video, guys. If you enjoyed it, feel free to go down below and hit that like button. It really supports me again. And I really appreciate every single one of you guys out there, you know, smashing that like button, subscribing to the channel, you know, watching my dumb face every day. It really does mean a lot to me. So I'll catch you all in the next video. There might be a video on the 4th of July. There, there might not be. I'm leaning towards making a pretty interesting video for you guys. So keep an eye out for that. I hope you all do enjoy the 4th of July. If you do celebrate it, if not, I hope you guys enjoy whatever else you're up to. I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks again for watching. Peace out.